Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. There are several important aspects of this gospel that apply directly to us. First, here you have a poor little Zacchaeus, a poor little man, living his life. Let me put it this way. Living his life the way he sees fit to live it, no matter what that includes, you know, all the good and the bad and everything. But at some point in his life, he hears something. He hears something about this Jesus. Who is this Jesus? What is this, this news I'm, I'm hearing about all the time? So the first important aspect of this gospel for where we are, for us, is that he wants to see him. He wants to see the Lord. And that's huge. Because, my gosh, therein, that question, if I want to or if I don't want to, therein lies the difference between most people in the world, even today. Do you want to see Jesus? Yes. Well, then, then we go on to the next step. No. And then just go on living life. We just go on living kind of the way we've always lived. And, you know, don't bother me. I'm living in this closed circuit, and it's fine. And I don't pay attention to anything except, in his case, like cheating people and making money and all of that. It was very important to him. It was his way of life. But then, all of a sudden, he hears he's coming. He wants to see him. So he does whatever he needs to do to see him. That's the whole sycamore tree. He goes in a place where he can actually experience with his own eyes what all the commotion is about. So the least that people can do in the world, Christians especially, is continue to yearn and to burn with the, the zeal to see Christ. I want to see Him. I want to see Him today. I want to see Him in what I'm doing. I want to see Him in my relationships. I want to see Him in my art. Now I'm living. Now I'm thinking. I would like to see you, Lord. My Lord. So what happens then once we see Him? Once we find Him? Guaranteed, if you look for a minute even, for Christ, you're going to find Him. If you have a sincere heart, and not just once and done, like in this big situation today, but on a daily basis, if we look for Jesus, we're going to find Him. He's going to come to where we are. In other words, the minute you open your eyes, He's going to say, here I am. Now, do this. So in Zacchaeus' case, Zacchaeus comes out of this tree, I have to come to your house today. I have to stay at your house, which is a huge honor. And by the way, anytime you encounter the living God, anytime you encounter Christ, it's an honor when He asks you to do something, to live this way today, to do this task, to change this thing. Right? But He didn't ask any of that yet. And yet, He asked all of it by simply asking Zacchaeus, today I must stay at your house. Come down now. Be with me. So first we have to love. Second, we have to accept the invitation. Because the minute I said that we, as I said, we see Christ, He's going to invite us to some new life, to some new thing today, to some new task. And, and when that happens, look what happens when the grace of God comes to us. He comes to His senses, the third, the third you could say, movement of this gospel, where now you and I have to do something. We have to respond because the grace that's flooding into us is, you know, you, it's, you can't keep it away. It's compelling. The grace that comes in says to Zacchaeus, how about this? How about this? How about this? And Zacchaeus says, okay, I will give half of my goods away to the poor if I've stolen anything and all it have like in your own life a million solutions for this or for this or for this. 
But you can't get to that place, you can't get to that place in a good way until you want to see Jesus first. Maybe you're struggling like, I don't even know if I believe in Christ. I don't even know if I, you know, like if I could ever change this way of life with mine, etc., etc. Well, the point is, search to see Christ. Let Him ask you the question. Let Him say, today I have to come into your house, you know, this heart, this soul of mine. I have to come in there. And once I come there, then ask the questions. Maybe I'm being asked to change my whole way of life. I thought I was on the right path doing this, 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 and this. But now that I've looked for you, Lord, and you've, and you've invited me, now what are you asking me to do? That's exciting. That's dynamic. That's the Christian life. And once we do that, once we accept and respond and, and say, okay, well, I didn't think about this before, this minute up in the tree, but I'll give half of my goods away. That's a pretty significant thing for a guy who's been doing nothing but falsely collecting money from everybody, the rich and the poor and everybody. He says, I'll give half of everything away. And if I've cheated anyone, I'll give them so much. That's an enormous repentance, you see? The theme of this gospel is, if I'm seeking Christ, if He invites me, if He instills the grace in me to see what I need to do, it requires some change. Maybe what I've been doing is not blessed. Maybe what I've been doing was okay for that time, if it wasn't sin even. But now maybe He's asking me, through this new revelation into my house, to change, to try this. To work on this, to be obedient to this. In other words, the whole process is called repentance. This process of like letting the Lord shine a new thought, a new revelation into all those little places, all, even all, all those little dark places in my soul, so that I can say, "Huh, I need to do this. I need to give half of my goods away." For instance, I need to stop doing this. I need to start doing this. Right. You can trace in the lives of all the saints the moment when they themselves came to such an enormous decision, but subsequently operating under this continual grace coming, the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit coming and coming, they made that choice daily. They picked up their cross daily. They had new revelation, you could say, daily. What do I need to do today in order to strengthen my relationship with Christ. So then the final, at the end of the gospel, so Jesus says, salvation has come to this house. Isn't that the, the objective, right? To be in a new position, to be in a position now where we're completely open to Christ, who is always open to us, but now we've reoriented towards Him. And He says, now salvation is possible for you. Now you are fulfilling what my mission is, which is coming to save the lost. I'm looking for you just as much as you're looking for me, Jesus says. So when Zacchaeus is going up to see Christ, Christ is looking for him too. How, how do you see him up in the tree? You know? Except you're looking for him. So this beautiful synergy, you know, between God and man, very active in your life, I promise. We don't just say, I believe in God. Like in the creed, we say, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, and so Without any substance, without any of this dynamic movement that, between God and man that this gospel really highlights, words, just words. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, and Just words. Might as well be saying like a grocery list. But the minute we like orient, not only do I believe in the one God and in His Son and in the Holy Spirit and in the Holy, one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, not only do I believe like with my mind, but I embrace the providence of God. I go up into the tree. I say, I believe, Lord. What's going to happen next? See how dynamic the Christian faith really is? I, since I believe in You, since I've opened myself and made myself vulnerable to you. What's going to happen? What's next? What do you have for me to do? 
and what do you have for me, and what do I need to do, etc. See how dynamic it is? It requires something of you. It requires significant something. Like, I don't ever want to go to this place, but now look, the Lord is there. He's visiting my house. He's showing me that one thing that I've always wanted to not look at. So, guess what? I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do something very vigorous there. I'm going to really clean that up, whatever. Maybe I'll give half of what I own to the poor. If that's my thing, maybe I'll, I'll just change my whole focus on how I spend my time. If that's my problem. Etc. Etc. You see, like we're preparing for Lent now. This gospel is here for great Lent. He's saying, the, the church is saying, through this gospel. Okay, time to get ready for a very intensive, dynamic relationship with your Lord. And that begins with like the rumblings of repentance. What does that mean? Like, I have to know that I want to see Christ. And I have to know that if I see Christ, boy, will he ask something. <laughs> He's going to ask something again? You mean again this year I have to think about this all over again? Yes. And it's a good kind of little microcosm of your whole life. Because if you do that year in, year out, at the very least, during the great fast, right, you have some chance of making that real in your, in your, in your big life, in your great cycle of life. But if you never do it, if you never go through any cycles, daily or weekly or annually with the great fast, how will I know? How will I know what to look for? So seek him. Look for him. And he'll show you like what great land this year means for you. What has to happen in you. And you know how dynamic it is? For all of us, it's a little bit different. You know, it's not a cookie cutter thing. Even between members of the same house, you know, like he's saying to each of you, I have to come to your house, your house, your house, your house. Even if we all live in the same house, each of us has a different sort of need, if you will. A different sort of offering to give to Christ. Are you looking? Are you searching? Guess what? These are the bells that are ringing for the annual, you know, deep search, the deep dive into what I need to be working on, to be changing, to be embracing what Christ chose to do.